All right, good afternoon everybody and thanks for taking time out of your day to join us for today's informational webinar on the NIST 800-171 guidance. My name is Jeff Yeagley with Compass IT Compliance and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. Before we go ahead and get into the presentation, I just wanted to go over a couple of quick housekeeping rules for everybody that's joining us today. Uh, first things first, uh, if you could, everyone could mute their lines, please, so that way that there's no background noise and doesn't distract Pat from going through his presentation, uh, that'd be great. The second piece is, uh, since this is a topic that's um, fairly uh, new and has a lot of different uh, access controls, as you'll see as we're going through it, if you have any questions, we do afford the opportunity at the end for a brief Q&A session. So there's a chat function or a chat icon. Uh, should be on the lower left hand side of your screen so if you have any questions you can feel free to pop them right into there and we'll take some time at the end to uh, review those questions and answer those for you uh, so today I'm going to introduce or right now rather I'm going to introduce today's uh, presenter uh, Patrick Hughes is one of our IT auditors uh, has extensive experience working with clients in a variety of different vertical markets and actually has done several of these NIST 800 uh, 171 risk assessments uh, for different manufacturers and uh, government uh, contractors and subcontractors. So he's very familiar with this topic, which is awesome. He's got hands-on experience that he can lend throughout the presentation. Uh, we're estimating about 30 minutes. So um, again, this will be a high-level overview, but uh, at this point in time, I'm going to quiet down and, and turn it over to Pat. Pat, go ahead, man. Take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. I just want to uh, first off thank everyone for taking the time to uh, join us today for the webinar and uh, we'll get we'll get right into it. Uh, so first off, here's just the, the quick agenda of how how the uh, presentation is going to go. We're going to just touch on what exactly is NIST 800-171. Uh, again, very high level as Jeff had stated, um, but we will uh, get down to the, uh, the requirements of it there. Um, then we'll talk about the importance of data security and why it's important that uh, these organizations are securing their data properly um, and we'll get into uh, complying with the 800-171 guidelines uh, being that it is a very specific framework and uh, many organizations aren't familiar with it um, then i'll give you a brief overview of the 800-171 controls again very high level um, as there is about 109 um, control objectives so we won't get into uh, each one, but we'll cover the, the 14 control families and then sources and we'll, we'll open it up for questions. Um, so moving right along, what exactly is NIST 800-171? It's a special publication of the NIST 800-53 and it requires that any contractor or subcontractor that works with the federal government secure their data properly. Uh, this special publication deals with the protection of controlled unclassified information or CUI as they like to refer to it um, and unclassified technical information in non-federal information systems and organizations. Uh, this framework provides contractors and subcontractors a standardized guide to protect unclassified information that they, pro that they process or store on non-government owned or operated information systems. With just over three months left to go in the year, contractors and subcontractors that provide products and or services to the federal government are scrambling to meet its end of the year deadline or risk losing the ability to work on government contracts. Uh, we've dealt with several uh, clients of ours that are going through mediation right now for uh, risk assessments that we've done over the past few months. And uh, it can be very hectic as they did uh, implement this deadline of the end of the year which um, really puts the pressure on organizations and um, we're glad to help in that regard. Um, so moving right along, uh, data, data security, obviously extremely important. Um, oh, excuse me here. It's critical because it contains client information, payment information, personal files, and potentially uh, government information as it relates to uh, this framework itself. All this information can be hard to replace and potentially dangerous if it falls into the wrong hands, as, uh, as many of you know. Um, data lost physically due to fires and flooding and, and things like that can be devastating, but, but having a hacker or malware breach can have a much larger, larger impact to uh, an organization, so it's important that the data be secured properly. Um, 
the first step to developing a uh, data security strategy is determining what is critical and how you plan on going about screening or, or I'm sorry, securing that critical data, um, what potential threats could emerge and what you have in place to make sure you are secured. Uh, this is kind of doing your own uh, risk assessment, if you will, and just um, understanding what it is that your business does um, and how you secure that data and what your plan of attack is to make sure that that uh, remains secure. Um, it, co it should cover everything from physical threats to um, an uneducated employee, for example, compromising the business through, let's say, maybe a phishing attack or um, something of that nature. Once the strategy is in place, it's time to carry out the plan and become secure. The best way to do this is a combination of technical controls, physical controls, and educating employees. Technical controls being that you have your, your network configured properly to prevent unwarranted access into the network. Um, that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Physical security at the business location itself to ensure no malicious activity occurs. Um, you know, having things in place such as um, locks, alarms, uh, security cameras, um, especially around areas that, you know, maybe have where the, the server or the database is located. And then finally, um, educating the employees. And I think that's the, the first line of defense, and um, if not the most important, because you got to make sure that your employees are up to date on the latest security threats and they know what to look out for um, being suspicious activity and um, things like phishing emails and, and what they, they can and cannot do, being that employees are, are the first line of defense, as I mentioned, um, and sometimes the biggest threat. Uh, and then just cybersecurity in the news is, is in the news on a daily basis now with President Trump elevating the, the U.S. Cyber Command to the same level as other com combatant commands is, is huge. Uh, prior to this, this uh, announcement by Trump, the uh, Cyber Command was treated just as any other combatant command. And now with the, uh, the elevation of it, it kind of goes to show you just how important cybersecurity has become in today's age. Uh, right. So complying with with the NIST 800-171 can be challenging for many organizations. First and foremost, just because of the, the pressure that the federal government has put on these contractors and subcontractors to have the uh, documented cybersecurity plan in place by the end of 2017, which with it already being September, that doesn't leave much time. Um, Excuse me. Uh, the standard itself consists of roughly 109 controls, as I stated earlier, uh, with 14 control families that those 109 are, are broken down across. Um, and that can be overwhelming to some of these smaller organizations that we've dealt with, with, you know, maybe just one IT guy that's that's trying to run the whole show. Um, that, that's a lot to take on, especially for um, these companies that, have, that aren't used to an, an assessment like this before. Um, the size of the organization doesn't matter either. It can be um, any sm small business, you know, one, two people to these large uh, other agencies that, that everyone has to comply with the, um, the 800-171. Some organizations simply just don't have the manpower to get this done by the deadline and will be asked to uh, reach out to independent third parties to assist them in assessing and then more importantly the, the remediation once the assessment has, uh, has been completed. The first step of the process should be to have a thorough and detailed NIST 800-171 risk assessment conducted, that being using the, the framework itself with those 109 controls, having a, an independent third party come in and kind of assess where you are today. Um, and rate those those controls at either a high, medium, medium or low um, risk rating, and, and that kind of helps to to prioritize remediation, if you will. Uh, once the risk assessment has been completed, it's important that the remediation efforts begin as soon as possible, being that you know this deadline of the end of the year is in place, and uh, it's important that uh, the risk the risk assessment be done and, and kind of prioritized. Where, where the big control weaknesses lie, uh, that way that the uh, federal government can see that remediation efforts are in place and that you're going to 
take those appropriate actions to get those things done by the end of the year. And then just getting into the, the overview of the 800-171, again, this is very high level, but these are the 14 different control families. Um, being in these families, that's where the, the 109 controls lie. Some of them, um, for example, access control have many more more control objectives than, let's say, something like uh, physical protection. Um, so I'll just kind of run through each one and what they consist of very high level um, so that you have a, a general idea of what, what this publication is looking for. Access control being that limiting the information systems access to only individuals with a business need, basically making sure that, that um, unwarranted access through, through your own employees um, doesn't occur and that people that don't need to have access just simply do not have access. So we're limiting who can see that, that critical data, that being CUI um, in this case. Um, secondly, awareness and training. Uh, this one's huge because as I stated before, employees are your first line of defense, um, ensuring that managers, systems administrators, and users of organizational information systems are made aware of the security risks associated with all their actions. Um, providing security awareness training to employees is critical so they know what to look out for, as stated earlier, um, and the upcoming security threats. Uh, for example, when the, the uh, wanna cry and, and all the other uh, ransomware attacks were going on, if people weren't made aware of those, they were much more vulnerable to, uh, to a breach. Um, moving right along, audit and accountability. Uh, creating and retaining information systems audit records to the extent needed to enable the monitoring, analysis, investigation, and reporting of unlawful, unauthorized, or inappropriate information systems activity. Having audit logs is crucial because we want to know where the broke, where the breakdown um, occurred, and, uh, and and when, so that way we can track what went wrong. Uh, configuration management. Establish and maintain baseline configurations and inventories of organizational information systems and ensuring that these configurations are secure. Uh, that one's huge because you want to make sure your, your network's configured properly um, to prevent a breach in the first place. And uh, I think it's, it's crucial to be proactive in that regard. Identification and authentication. Authenticating the identity of users access to information systems through tools such as multi-factor authentication. This is basically having uh, complex passwords and, and um, authenticating into any applications that you that you guys use uh, as a business to make sure that they are secure and not just everyone has, has the same level of access. Um, incident response. Uh, establishing an operational incident response plan of the procedures and policies that are in place uh, so that when an incident does occur, um, everyone knows what to do and the appropriate procedures to follow uh, to, uh, to maintain the, uh, the security of the data. Uh, maintenance, uh, performing effective and secure maintenance of all information systems, uh, making sure that the, the maintenance that, that does occur is done properly and documented and um, in a secure manner. Media protection. Physically securing data, in this case, the CUI or controlled unclassified information. Um, that's just referring to, to physically securing CUI, uh, making sure there's no blueprints of, of items that could be um, laying out on, on a manufacturing floor, um, as well as on information systems itself, making sure those are secured and not just anyone can, can get a hold of that. Personnel security. Uh, performing things like background checks to ensure that individuals that you grant access to CUI can be trusted. That's you know when uh, when HR hires someone to make sure that they're 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 uh, they can be a trusted individual and have performed a background check on those employees. Physical protection, protecting, monitoring the business location with controls such as locks, cameras, and alarm systems, as we we briefly touched on earlier. Um, just making sure that that um, all the appropriate physical controls are in place. Um, more, more is better in this case to, uh, to ensure that you're doing everything possible 
to keep your location secure. Uh, Sign-in sheets are huge, especially to things like server rooms, so that when you see the the timestamp on the the matching camera, you can kind of align this person was in there at this time. That way, we can we can cover our own our own self if an, an uh, incident was to occur. Um, we know who was in there and at what time. Um, risk assessment. Periodically assessing the risk of organizational operations to see where weaknesses show up and uh, what remediation can be done. Um, that can be done on an annual basis, uh, biannual basis, however you want to want to do that. But it's important that you know what risks lie within your business and how to go about remediating those. Um, similar to that would be the security assessment number 12 here. Um, which is just assessing the security controls that you do have in place. Um, being like, for an example, if you, you physical security, let's say you don't have um, an alarm system or cameras, and that would be a control weakness, and maybe you want to implement one of those two options or both um, to be more secure. Systems and communications protection, monitoring and protecting organizational communications when transmitting confidential data or CUI. Um, and then finally, system and information integrity, identifying and correcting of information system flaws in a timely manner. Um, that being when, when something does go wrong and, and you're made aware of it, that um, we correct that in a timely manner and take the appropriate steps to remediate those, those uh, issues. Uh, so those are the, the, um, the, four, the 14 main uh, control families. And I, as previously stated, the 109 different control objectives fall under those categories. So that's just kind of a, a high level rundown of what the, uh, the 800-171 framework is looking for. Um, and with that, we'll just move along here to um, sources and then Compass would be glad to assist you in any way we can. Uh, here's our contact information. And finally, I just wanted to, to thank everyone for their time today, and I'll turn it over to Jeff uh, with any questions. Awesome, Pat. Great job, man. Thank you so much. And, you know, this is such an interesting topic to me, maybe because I work for Compass, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but it's amazing that organizations of all sizes have to comply with this, and I, I think it's a great um, foundation for organizations to set because you know, the importance of, of securing that data and making sure it doesn't, as you identified in the presentation, end up in the wrong hands is so so crucial uh, to the security really of, of the country, right? Uh, and that's why that this requirement has been put on the different contractors and subcontractors. So uh, what intrigues me is that, again, it, it, you can be a, a, a subcontractor and a organization of a couple people and have to comply with the same exact requirements as a uh, Lockheed Martin or Northrop Grumman. Um, so it's just really interesting to see that uh, um, the same requirements being put on on all organizations. And in addition, the complexity of it too with 109 different controls is just uh, can be overwhelming to organizations. So as Pat alluded to, you know, anything we can do to assist in that process to help you meet that deadline, we'd uh, we'd welcome the opportunity. So I'll open it up to any questions that that anyone might has. There's none in the chat box as we as we speak right now. Um, so I'll kind of give a last call here in terms of any questions that that might be uh, kind of percolating out there, and we can get those answered for you. Um, and if there's no questions, then uh, if you think of something after the fact, Pat's contact information is on the screen here. So you can jot that down or you can send it over to uh, info at compassitc.com as well. So uh, I don't see any questions that have come in here. So I'm going to wrap things up here, first of all, by thanking you, Pat, for taking the time to prepare the presentation and run through it today for everybody. Uh, so appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule. Thanks to the folks that were able to join us. Uh, one other thing I will add too is for the folks that maybe registered but had something come up last minute and, and weren't able to join, um, this is being recorded and it will be posted to both our YouTube channel and our website. Uh, so feel free to check out those locations if you'd like to share this or rewatch it, um, grab some additional information or, or whatever the case might be. Uh, and last piece here. For September, our webinar is going to be the last week of the month. Uh, it's going to be, I believe, on the 28th, actually, which is a Thursday at 2 o'clock, and we're going to talk about uh, GDPR, uh, the new European regulation that takes effect in 2018 and what that means for uh, organizations based here in the United States that do business in the European Union uh, and the requirements that they will have to 
um, protect the data that they store. So uh, again, Pat, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you to everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you at the end of the month for GDPR. Take care, everybody. Thanks.